What is going on guys? My name is Bill Matthews from the Bass and Bill 96 YouTube channel and in today's video we are going to be talking about the three main mistakes that people make in the summer months when they go out fishing. So stick around, stay tuned, we are going to jump right into it. The very first mistake that I see a lot of guys making in the summer is they like to fish those areas where they've been catching fish in the spring. So right now we're sitting up on top of a grass flat in like two foot of water. This is an area that I absolutely obliterated them all spring long, throwing reaction baits like chatter baits, uh, lipless crankbaits, stuff like that where they're up there chasing bait fish around, starting to feed up and get ready for the spawn. And a lot of guys, you know, they think about the success that they had in the spring and they like to go back to those same exact areas. But in the summer, there's two things that I like to do and I like to fish super shady areas like up in the lily pads, underneath docks, tree overhangs, anything like that where those fish, they could be up shallow, but they're going to be up there protected, not have the sun beating down on them all day long. Uh, then the other thing that I like to do is go out deep. So we're going to actually go fish some docks right now, skip a wacky worm around, and I'm going to show you guys how to catch fish up shallow. Uh, where those fish, you know, they might transition off of those flats that you were catching them in the spring, but push up into those shady areas. So let's go skip some docks and try to catch a couple fish. Then we're going to get into mistake number two and number three as well. We have just pulled up to the first spot here, and as you guys can see, we have got all sorts of docks, and bass do not have eyelids. I'm going to just start out by saying that, and that is one of the reasons they don't like to sit out in these shallow flats when you got 90 degrees sun just beating down on them. They want to get up in that shade, or they want to be out deep in 15, 20 foot of water, so we're going to skip these, and as you guys can see, all sorts of shade underneath, you know, the boats, uh, pontoon boats are one of my favorite things if, to skip underneath, you'll probably see some of that, and then obviously the big base part of the dock, so... We've got a wacky worm tied up. We are just gonna skip a little four inch lunker log under these docks. Probably one of the best dock skipping baits of all time. Little Senko, just so easy to do. Spinning setup, uh, a lot of beginners. This is one of the first things that you'll kind of learn how to skip. So we're gonna sink this underneath some of these shady docks and try to catch one or two bass for you guys. Then we're gonna get into uh, mistake number two. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's a dinker. That was like second dock. Second dock, probably like third skip. Just caught one. We'll definitely try to catch at least one more since we got that one so freaking fast. Little dude, probably like a seven incher. Not a giant, but literally the second dock that we freaking skip. That's gonna be a fish. We're calling it right now, boys and girls. Yeah, there he is. There he freaking is under the pontoon boat. Like I said, that's one of my favorite places to skip. They just have so much freaking shade. We honestly just caught like six or seven bass under all these docks. I was trying to get you guys a little bit bigger one, but all these bass are just kind of shacked up under some of the shadiest parts of the lake. We actually were fishing earlier, filmed a video for my channel. We caught some really solid ones too, but we're gonna move on to mistake number two. You guys get the picture. You could catch a ton of bass under those docks though. Definitely give it a go. Do not want to be fishing open water, shallow flats, open banks. Those fish are gonna be relating to some sort of cover or they're gonna be out deep. We just moved spots. Mistake number two that I see a lot of guys making is as you guys can see, we have a lot of lily pads behind us. We're gonna go flip in these pads. What a lot of people do in the summertime is they use not a heavy enough weight. A uh, ton of guys are super comfortable throwing like a one eighth ounce, uh, one quarter ounce Texas rig. We have got a one ounce flipping weight on there with a the big old flipping hook. We're gonna go put that thing in some of the dirtiest nooks and crannies in this pad field and try to pull a few out for you guys. So you wanna use a big weight, you wanna be able to drop it down in those really, really thick spots. If you're using a quarter ounce, you're not gonna be able to get it where you need to go. So use a heavy enough weight and we're gonna go show you guys how to do that right now. We've got the big weight rigged up. Like I said, a little four out flipping hook. We got the Carl's Bait and Tackle Varmint on there. I think this is my last one too. So if one rips this off, we're probably gonna to have to switch up flipping baits, but any little beaver style bait will do. And like I said, we're trying to place this in some of those really, really thick back spots that other guys are not going to hit because a lot of people they're throwing those little quarter ounce weights you're not going to be able to get it back in there so we're going to flip this around and see if we can flip up a good sized bass because so far we've just caught those little dinks for y'all we need to catch you guys at least a 12 to 15 incher come on now got him oh way back in the stuff guys that's what we're freaking talking about and that is why you need to have that big old one ounce weight. You gotta be able to put it in the freaking deepest, dirtiest pads in the freaking lake. That's where we're gonna catch those fish. Little uh, Carl's Bait and Tackle Varmint right to the roof of the mouth. She freaking crushed it. We're gonna try to catch one more, no guarantees. Uh, if we don't, we're gonna move into mistake number three, but try to get at least one more out of these pads. That was pretty quick. Get her back in. We're out of those Carl's Bait and Tackle Varmints, but we are gonna put on one of these little Biospawn Exopods. One of my all-time favorite flipping baits. 
the really cool thing about these is they got a pretty dense body, but they still have a ton of action with these claws. So your hook is not popping through this too often, which it's one of the big problems that you run into when you're throwing one of these big flipping hooks. I really like throwing these exopods because it doesn't seem to do that for me. Oh, big, yep, big freaking shaker right there. Oh no! Oh guys, I freaking flipped in there and all the pads were moving. That was probably a freaking good one too. Oh no. She got off. That's the bad thing about fishing the heavy stuff. I mean, we got the right equipment to do it, but you still are bound to lose a couple fish here and there. That one just was buried in those pads. We just weren't able to pull her out quick enough. So as you guys can kind of see, this spot definitely ties into that first mistake I was talking about. I mean, we are fishing some of the thickest cover on the entire lake. Those fish, they're just not going to be roaming around the flats right now. That's more of a spring, more of a fall type of deal. And uh, this time of year when it gets really, really hot, really sunny outside, you need to be fishing something like this. So I don't know if we're going to get another bite. We fished through this earlier when I shot my other video and we caught probably a half a dozen fish out of here at least. So we did get those two, lost that one really good one and caught that one right away. So we're probably going to move into mistake number three right now, guys. The third and final mistake has to do with fishing out deep. So as you guys can see, we just moved spots again. We're out near the middle of the lake. And what I see a lot of guys do in the summer is they like throwing reaction baits. And when you have dead calm conditions like we do today, sun's high in the sky. We do not have a lot of wind on the water. You want to be throwing those bottom baits. So Ned rig, jig, stuff like that, Carolina rig, things that you could drag really, really slow on the bottom. Those are going to be your go-tos. Uh, if it gets really windy outside, that's when you're going to want to pick up those big crankbaits, try to get some of those reaction strikes. But just not going to be the move when you got no wind cover because those fish are going to be able to see every little thing with that crankbait going past their face. So we're going to put on a jig and a Ned rig, try throwing those around, try to catch a few fish out deep right here. Oh, here we go, here we go. There we go. There we go. Come on, baby. Yeah. On the jig, right off that drop. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right in this oh, bow, baby. Good. It's the biggest one of the day on the old jig. So we just moved off to this deep break right here. We're dragging around. We tried that Ned rig out for a bit, but I think that they're still kind of focusing on bluegills and stuff. So I put on this green pumpkin jig. But premise still holds true though. Those low and slow baits, you know, just dragging this along the bottom is gonna be what gets it done on a sunny and a pretty calm day too. So get a lot of wind, those crank baits, those reaction baits, that's what you're gonna wanna throw out deep. But for us, we were, we just drifted pretty shallow, but we were sitting in 11 foot of water, just dragging that jig and uh, nice and slow, got it done. Solid bass, gonna get her back in the water. Whoop. That is going to be a wrap on today's video, guys. I hope this helps you make a few less mistakes next time that you're on the water in the summertime and fishing. Uh, we're just going to recap really quick. The first mistake is fishing no nothing banks, you know, shallow banks that don't have a lot of structure on them. Uh, just not a lot of fish up on those shallow flats right now, so you want to be fishing under those shady, shady docks, up in the pads or out deep like you just saw us do right here. Uh, number two, if you are flipping the pads, you want to be using a heavy enough weight so you can get it into the juicy, thick stuff. And then lastly, you guys just saw too, you want to be throwing those slow bottoms baits on a really hot sunny day when there's not a lot of wind as you guys can see slick calm not going to be wanting to throw those big crankbaits around so those are the three tips that i have for you guys hopefully it helps you out and thank you so much to mtb for letting me take over the channel i will catch you guys in the next video